One of the things clients hire me to do is take a census of all of their vendors, their like SaaS vendors, uh, to particularly infrastructure. And one of the reasons why they wanna do that is because they have some specific like qualitative goal that they're trying to achieve and they are gonna need those vendors to perform uh, in some way or another. And so the question is like, do they do that? And so it's also just generally useful to just be like, what, what am I paying these people for? What am I paying these entities for? Especially because like the thing about software is that software is all about capability. And you know, if the vendor doesn't have a capability and you need that capability, then they're you know, in the way of a vendor that does. Or otherwise, you know, if it's important enough to, to try to, to you know, roll your own, whatever it is. And so much software out there really just reduces to taking a representation of information of some sort and then transforming that representation or re-representing it in some other way. And that is really what the project Intertwingler is about. It's about being able to make these representations of information without uh, all of the overhead of just all making an app. But I digress there because what I wanted to talk about was how relationships are important and getting more important in an environment where you're sort of seeing this like bifurcation of like all of the transactions that are really easy are garbage. They're like low value, like potentially even negative value. And the transactions that have like the economic transactions that have significant value, uh, the transaction costs are really high. And the way that you circumvent that is, is with relationships. And I mean, I have this idea that, that I've called a, a Kosian inversion. I can't remember if I mentioned it before, but the basic idea is like, if you read like Ronald Coase's Nature of the Firm from 1937, one of the remarks that he makes is the reason why firms exist and this is not the historical reason why firms exist but it's the sort of dynamical reason why they exist is because contracting is very expensive to have to do like a point-to-point -point contract for for every little thing and so the solution is that you just hire employees and you design a particular class of contract which is inverted in its bias so what it defines and a lot of this gets kicked out the statute but it defines everything the employer is not allowed to to demand of, a, of an employee and and this the transaction cost of this is supposed to be cheaper than this sort of point-to-point -point contracting but the idea of a cosian inversion is that it's actually expensive and certainly in the times that i have tried to like get a job like during the pandemic uh for example i have found it to be much more onerous to try to get like a, a just a job than than it is you know pitching clients and i mean uh, uh certainly like the bias uh, and, the, and the sort of disposition of, the, of a prospective uh, employer is completely different from that of a, of a prospective client for starters. But what's sort of interesting about it is, is the sort of the low value work is very cheap. You know, you download an app and, you know, and, and you're working for Uber kind of a thing. But it's not, there's not a lot of value there. And so one of the things that's happening with uh, AI, uh, and but it's you know was there long before it is. It was all these sort of automated kind of like no recourse systems for filtering out applicants, and so people will spend all sorts of time, like say for example applying for jobs, and they don't know that they've been like blacklisted by some robot because of some thing or whatever, and it's just a completely opaque process. But 
what you're going to see though is you're going to see all sorts of like you know let's call it seo but for you know just trying to have your uh, resume and make it through the uh, the chum uh, machine to get to the other side so that an actual human being sees it but like if you have access to like you know who your prospective boss would be you could just go straight to them and skip all that and that's kind of like what the power of a relationship uh, demonstrates and i think that that kind of thing, like when you sort of think about all of these places where, again, the transaction costs are cheap, but the thing is garbage. Um, you know, when you get to the point where like once upon a time there were goods and the goods had a price and, you know, you knew that if you went to a Starbucks that your latte would cost the same from one, you know, one day to the next and one place to the next. And, you know, retailers, for example, want to... Uh, uh, make it so that maybe that's not the case anymore. There's uh, uh, pushes to sort of Uberize the uh, the prices of retail goods, uh, in particular retail uh, goods and services. Analog, the you know, same sort of thing with insurers. Same sort of thing with like you know, effectively like anybody with the wherewithal to be like, oh, you want the thing, do you? You know, well, we're going to charge you surge pricing for that. And say for you know, to take it back to the the beginning. Uh, if your SaaS vendor, for instance, has, I mean, then there's all sorts of risks with SaaS vendors, but if your SaaS vendor is like, oh, you know, that's a thing you want to do, well, we're going to charge you at the yin yang for it. And you're stuck because your data is already in there. And so, you know, again, like one of the things that I've been uh, really focusing on is like, well, how do you make it so as effectively insurance against these counterparties so that they just can't do that? And, and furthermore, you know, which of the counterparties are the ones that are going to not do that? Which are the ones that are actually going to behave? You know, I'd rather deal with the entity who's not going to screw me over, who's not going to try to send, you know, sell me bullshit, who's not going to try to mislead me, who's not going to try to, you know, uh, uh, gouge et cetera, et cetera. It's like, I want to be able to just deal with them. And that has to do with like, you know, personal relationships as well. I, I want people who aren't going to sell me out. I want people who are, you know, going to perform, et cetera. And I want to be able to sort of support and nurture those relationships and not have to, you know, just take whatever I get. And uh, this sort of, this is a part of my ongoing series on, on, relationships becoming way more important in this uh, 21st century. So look out for that and, uh, and finish my coffee.